Hey, what's up you guys? So lately I've been having a lot of fun playing this game called Pikmin 216. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's right. We finally had somebody step up to the plate and make an amazing Pikmin 2 ROM hack. And today in this video, I gotta review it. Because I've been playing this ROM hack so much lately and I have a lot to say. First things first, who made this ROM hack and what is a ROM hack? So it's another YouTuber on the platform and I might be pronouncing his name incorrectly, but I'll just put the name up on screen too. I think it's Teddy Rusa Yoshi, right? Teddy Rusa Yoshi 216. Shout out to this person because this is the person who made it you could find the uh, download link on their channel i'll put their launch video down in my description i highly recommend you check it out so that's the who but now the what what is a rom hack i've actually talked about rom hacks before on my channel i made that really big video talking about all the different ocarina of time rom hacks that are out there more or less a dedicated fan gets really passionate about a certain game like pikmin or ocarina of time and they kind of manipulate the game code and rearrange a couple of things. Sometimes they add their own original content into the game, thus making it its own original ROM hack. So the reason why specifically this Pikmin 2 16 had me really excited, because it wasn't somebody just taking the Pikmin 2 game engine and rearranging some stuff, you know, putting treasures in different areas and like rearranging some enemies. No, this person did so much as far as rearranging this game. It feels like a brand new Pikmin experience. And so that's obviously what I had to talk about today. What is so different about this new Pikmin experience and what makes it so good? Today, you guys, I'm going to be talking about Pikmin 2 16 everything that goes into it all the caves all the music all the overworld stuff the enemies and anything else in between and i'll tell you guys what i think and let you know if you should try it out for yourself so first things first how well does this rom hack actually run because there are some rom hacks out there sometimes they drop frames they're not very optimized they don't run very well sometimes they're buggy they're just unpolished they don't actually work as they're intended to so how does this rom hack hold up is it like experimental kind of buggy or does it actually run like a pikmin 2 game well as far as i'm concerned i found that this rom hack runs very well it always keeps a consistent frame rate it's definitely not like buggy or like unpolished there's never like a moment where i get stuck or like the game doesn't work properly it's not like that at all the only few times that there's like any lag or like frame delay is when I have 100 Pikmin on screen and there's like a lot happening. There's just a lot for the game to render, but it's very far and few between. And usually there's like a specific reason why I'm, you know, dropping frames and getting a little bit of lag. There's just a lot happening on screen. Overall, I would say that this ROM hack is very polished. It's very optimized. It runs very well. And there's no like game breaking glitches or anything that I've run into so far. So before I get into like the main review of like the areas, the enemies, the caves and stuff, I guess I gotta talk about this too. What is the story for this Pikmin 2 16 ROM hack? Well, it is gonna be the exact same story that we got in Pikmin 2. Like it's literally the same thing. I'm not too sure if this person was able to change it. Like maybe some of the text is different, but pretty much what you did in Pikmin 2, you're gonna be doing it again, but in brand new areas in this Pikmin 2 16 ROM hack. So you're gonna be paying off the debt. This time it's 20,000 instead of 10,000, but the way you gather items kind of balances out and it's kind of the same. And after you pay off the debt, you're gonna have to go back to that final area and get Louie. So it is pretty much the exact same story, but that doesn't really affect me in any way. I already told you guys multiple times I don't really care about stories too much in video games, especially in ROM hacks. So now that we got the story out of the way, let's get to the actual review. First things first, we gotta look at these overworlds, all the brand new overworlds that we got. So if I'm being honest, yeah, I think these overworlds are like 10 out of 10. I think they're fantastic. So I could see a lot of people being on the fence about this because there are a lot of areas in this ROM hack that are really similar to Pikmin 2. But if I'm being honest, so much about these areas was changed. They do feel so different in not only the aesthetics and themes, but the way you navigate them. They really do feel like fresh areas and they were just borrowing similar aesthetics from the other games. So I guess, for example, the first area you actually start off in, I believe it's called Golden Coast or Golden Bay. This area leans heavily into that beach theme and I think it comes across really nicely. And it honestly took me a really long time to realize I was just playing through the perplexing pool again. That's how much was changed about this area and how different it felt to play through it all. But yeah, the first area we got, the Golden Coast. Overall, I really like that area. The next area we got, the Evergreen Forest. I'm gonna be honest, it was kind of the weakest area I feel out of the entire ROM hack. But I gotta emphasize this area is not like a total retread. I do like the overall like environmental changes. They did make it feel a lot more lush. There was a lot more roadblocks added to the this area kind of changing how you navigate it a bit the next area that we got i might be pronouncing this wrong the autumnal valley the autumn no valley I don't know, but this is probably my favorite area in the game. It just took an established map, it completely changed the aesthetics, it flooded the area, added all these cool tree branches, it made it feel completely brand new. It had really good exploration, a lot of different pathways for a lot of different Pikmin types depending on what you were trying to do. And then of course we had the last final area which was an original area. I guess overall this map it feels a little big and barren, it's not as well fleshed out and polished as the other maps. But honestly, I'm gonna say that this is a good thing. This map feels really refreshing. I like just like the huge snow plains for you to walk around in, all the different stuff for you to look at. 
that. Yeah, I definitely think this was like a really good final area for this ROM hack. It was an original area. It was really fun too. The aesthetics were very solid. The aesthetics for all these areas, you got to understand, are really cool. Every single area, even if it is like a little bit similar to an area we already played, the entire theming, like the entire aesthetics, everything just feels so brand new. It's a lot of fun to explore. A lot of the theming and aesthetics that Pikmin 2 already had, like how surreal and chill it is, a lot of the nature vibes, it's been cranked up to 11 in this ROM hack. Everything is so lush. There's so much nature stuff going on. And I guess now is a really good time for me to bring up the caves in this Pikmin ROM hack because the caves highlight this more so than anything. <laughs> So yeah, all the caves in this ROM hack, they're pretty much brand new. But here's the thing I really gotta emphasize. In my opinion, these caves were kind of a mixed bag. Some of these caves, they were genuinely awesome. They were really cool, and they did push what I thought Pikmin 2 was even capable of. Like, as far as theming and aesthetics, it was really sweet what some of these caves looked like and what they wanted you to do. However, I do gotta say, some of these caves redefine the meaning of slog. They just feel like they go on way too long. Some of these floors are enormous, like, just so big. They're way too big. What it kind of felt like sometimes is they would take, like one floor of a cave and like add two of them together to make it twice as big like i'm gonna try and find a couple examples of what i'm talking about if you look at what i'm seeing on screen it just feels like these caves just go on and on you can't even really tell where these treasures are supposed to be and you're just spending hours looking for them i'm telling you i would spend like an hour and a half on each one of these caves problem with these caves is like sometimes they just felt way too difficult there was a bunch of obnoxious enemies clustered way too close together but you know what i think that right there is where i have to stop complaining because i don't know about you guys but this is starting to sound like somewhat of a personal issue because I've heard a lot of people talk about how much they like the caves in Pikmin 2, how much, you know, they enjoy the difficulty, the dungeon setup. Honestly, I think the stuff that I'm complaining about, some Pikmin fans might actually enjoy. I feel like there's a lot of people that would enjoy the idea that these caves are like double in length, they're double in challenge. So I guess that's what I will say. If you really do like, you know, a difficult, challenging cave in Pikmin 2, this ROM hack is for you, because it felt like more often than not, a lot of the caves in this ROM hack were really challenging, really long, just like a genuine, you know, dungeon for you to crawl through with your army. So it's somewhat of a love-hate thing for me, but I could totally see a lot of other fans being into it for the same reasons. Oh, and I guess another thing to piggyback off the caves and, you know, kind of branch into the next subject, we gotta talk about the music in this ROM hack, because the music, in my opinion, can also be somewhat of a mixed bag. So a lot of the music from what I can hear, it's going to be taken from Zelda, Mario, and Pokemon, and then they put it through the Pikmin 2 sound font. So it'll be something like it's playing a familiar, established Mario song, but it's being played through Pikmin 2's instruments, you know what I mean? And this can come across with a lot of mixed results. Some of these songs, especially the Zelda songs I've noticed, they come out beautifully. They're not only really nice to listen to through the Pikmin instruments, but they really do fit a lot of the areas you're playing through. But some of these songs, I don't know, man, maybe it's just me, but they come across kind of repetitive, kind of annoying. I would say majority of the music, it's pretty nice, it fits the ROM hack very well, but some of the music it doesn't hit very well and it's just kind of annoying. So now I gotta talk about the uh, the new enemies and the new bosses. Pretty much it was a lot of the same enemies we got from Pikmin 2, but they were kind of like repurposed and they, they changed how they function really. There was something like instead of there being a fire breathing blowhog, there was now something like a poison breathing blowhog, stuff like that, but there are no like generally new enemies. There are no like new models of enemies. So you'll notice with a lot of these enemies, they had their textures swapped, like the, the colors on them look a little bit different. And I definitely need to emphasize that uh, this Pikmin 2 16 ROM hack, it's supposed to be a little bit more difficult than Pikmin 2 actually was. A lot of these enemies they had their movement speed increased and i'm pretty sure I, I could be wrong about this but it feels like a lot of their health was increased a little bit as well and honestly i don't mind this at all i think it's pretty sweet it adds a little bit of extra challenge to the game and the bosses i would say the bosses in this game are really cool now one thing i started to notice is they do repeat a lot of the boss fights in this rom hack like you're definitely going to be fighting the burrowing snagrit a lot and the beady long legs you're going to be fighting those bosses a lot in this rom hack now i'm not really going to blame them i'm pretty sure uh some of these bosses were just too difficult to code back into the game that definitely happens a lot with these ROM hacks. I know for a fact Bongo Bongo and Ocarina of Time is really hard to code into a ROM hack. And this is one thing I do gotta say, maybe some of the boss fights, uh, they repeat themselves a lot, but the arenas are always really cool. The arenas that you fight the bosses in, they always feel like they have a lot of effort put into them. They always look really nice. It's always a really cool aesthetic. It's way better than the arenas we got in the actual Pikmin 2 game. This ROM hack has really good boss fight arenas. <laughs> So now I'm starting to slow down a little bit. I've already reviewed a lot of the core elements that this ROM hack has to offer. One thing I do gotta note, while yeah, we have the same set of Pikmin in this ROM hack that we got in Pikmin 2, it's still just like the same colors with the same abilities. They did change up a little bit the order in which you get the Pikmin. Like, I know in Pikmin 2, you first get the red and then eventually you get the purple, but it's completely different in this ROM hack. First you get the red and then eventually you get the white. In fact, the purple Pikmin, I'm pretty sure, is the last one you get. Just doing something simple like changing the order in which you unlock all the different Pikmin colors is really interesting, because then it totally changes the way you explain 
explore the overworld and how you can get through stuff. Like, in this ROM hack, there's a lot more paper bags in the world, making the purple Pikmin a lot more valuable. So, like, half the ROM hack, you're just waiting and waiting. You can't wait to get these purple Pikmin. Definitely gotta mention this, too. Like, the debt, it's a little similar to Pikmin 2. Like, it's 20000 instead of 10000 but stuff gives you generally more money, so it kind of balances out. But a lot of the treasures in this game, they're completely new. It's not all the same treasures we got in Pikmin 2. There's a lot of cool Nintendo references to other franchises. So there isn't too much to say about it, because it doesn't really affect the game a whole lot. But I do want to point it out. There are a lot of new treasures in this ROM hack, and it's pretty cool to see what they are. You know, see all the references. So I guess one of the last things I really want to emphasize with this Pikmin Pikmin 216 ROM hack. Uh, this ROM hack is completely packed with content. There is so much to do. Four overworlds, all the caves that were redone. I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure even all the missions were completely redone. I've been playing this ROM hack for well over 10 hours, and I still have a lot to do. I just finished paying off the debt. I'm still trying to rescue Louie, and I still got a lot of those missions to get through. So I guess that brings us to the conclusion of this video. Is Pikmin 216 fun? Is it good? Is it worth it? And if you're a Pikmin fan, would you enjoy playing this game well at the end of it all things considered i think this rom hack is fantastic it runs great a lot of the new stuff that they added was so much fun yeah absolutely if you're a fan of pikmin and you can't wait for nintendo to make the next pikmin game you need to play this rom hack you're doing yourself a serious disservice if you haven't played this rom hack these overworlds the caves there's so much for you guys to get out of this especially if you're one of those diehard pikmin fans that really likes the challenge you thought you know pikmin 2 is way too easy you're gonna get a lot out of this you're really gonna enjoy the level of challenge and how much they push this engine with what it could do. Again, check my description. I'm going to put his actual launch video down there so you guys could get going and like figure out how to start playing this for yourself. And I guess my closing thoughts for the video are just I'm really happy to see something like this actually get finished and put out into the world. It feels like ever since the release of Pikmin 4, the whole community of Pikmin, it's been growing a lot more. You're starting to see fans like actually take the initiative to make a ROM hack and a lot of people are enjoying it. A lot of people are playing it. People like me are making content about it. That's how much people want to talk about Pikmin. And those are my closing thoughts. I loved Pikmin 216. I thought it was a lot of fun and I could tell we're going to start getting a lot more ROM hacks coming in the near future and I can't wait to play them. Definitely let me know what you guys think. Have you heard of this ROM hack? Are you interested in playing it? Go check out Teddy Rusa Yoshi's channel. Go show him some love for making this awesome ROM hack. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate you guys watching my video, especially if you made it this far. And uh, I'll see you guys in my next video. I'll see you.